we were startled. I think everyone was startled by how rapidly trade could collapse. Uh, from 1975 to 2008, global trade had never fallen. We'd never seen a year of negative growth. And then we had trade collapsing by almost 30% in some cases. And we had to rethink, where is this coming from? Why is it? Has the world changed? Is, uh, are the models wrong? Is our understanding wrong? Well, what's going on is that uh, there's a combination of coordinated demand collapses in goods that are heavily traded. So uh, some goods aren't traded very much at all. Uh, milk is not really a tradable good. You want to drink the milk close to where it's produced. You don't want to have it go around the world. Uh, cars and heavy machinery, well, they go long distances and they are the ones that are most affected by demand falls. By a collapse in the U.S. economy, you stop needing automobiles. We had a huge downturn in, in worldwide autos. Autos are a traded good. Every bit of an automobile is traded many times, and that seems to be the, the focus of what's, what's happening. Well, one of the things that I think some surprised us, but we really should have known that it was coming, is that the big change in trade occurred within firms, within their existing relationships. Uh, firms, let's say you were sending watches from Switzerland to India, uh, the trade crisis shows up as a big reduction in the number of watches you sent. It does not show up so much as let's stop trading altogether, let's stop selling watches altogether and switch to something else. Uh, it, it's a within firm uh, change in activity. And that's, that's got some good news in there as well because what that means is it's likely to come back relatively quickly. The relationships that were there before the crisis are still there and the cost of establishing partnerships, if you will, doesn't need to be paid again. So I expect to see global trade rebounding relatively quickly. What do you think is going to happen in trade? We're going to see a return to where we were in, at some level. Uh, but the, the essence is going to be that there's more balance across the world in terms of where goods and services are consumed and where they're made. And it will be a shift gradually away from the economic powers of Europe and the U.S. towards South America and Asia. Uh, but it's not obsolescence for the advanced countries. Uh, it, one of the things we still see is much of the creativity and pushing the frontier tends to come from countries at the frontier. Uh, it, the production just doesn't happen to be there as often. Should there be a special policy for small and medium-sized enterprises? Well, to be honest, I know nothing about the specific policies of the Dutch government, but uh, every government has the same approach to small and medium-sized enterprises. They treat them uh, as if they're the sacred special children that, that deserve all sorts of extra attention. And the bottom line is if you go to trade, which is where I know uh, the world best, uh, most trade, the vast majority of trade, is done by very large enterprises. Uh, that are very sophisticated, that are multinational, that are both exporting and importing. And while obviously those enterprises started small and some of them started at a medium size, uh, if you want to think about what will increase trade, uh, focusing all your efforts on small and medium sized enterprises is just not going to get you very far. If you look at what matters for trade, forget about what country you are, uh, Proximity matters. It's much easier to trade with people and firms that are geographically close to you. And economic size matters. And Holland sits in the middle of a very densely populated, very rich part of the world. And it would be tragic if you tried to divert your activity away because you've heard that it's good to trade with China uh, and lost the opportunities that are at home. Naturally, over time, that number is going to go down because the partners will get richer, but they won't ever get any closer. What's the biggest risk in trade at the moment? Uh, well, the biggest risk right now, it's, and, and it's hugely important and there, it's very serious, is that the crisis has given rise to nationalist tendencies in all sorts of dimensions. Uh, the United States is a case in point. We are restricting the movement of people. We're talking about restricting the movement of goods. We're talking potentially about restricting the movement of ideas. We need free movement of those things across borders to promote long-run growth, and we need it not just for the United States, but for all countries. And there is a tendency in bad times to want to blame 
outsiders. And that tendency, we need leadership against that tendency. And sometimes we get it and sometimes we don't.